Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Delusional's Arcade. So it's the new year, we're actually working on some more projects here and we kind of want to finish up this one here. This is a millipede. The reason I want to finish up and I'm really eager to do it is because I have the opportunity of beta testing the Super Millipede Multi-Kit from High Score Saves. So I really want to get this motherboard and this PCB all buttoned up and capped and ready to go. So that's what we're going to do in this episode just to prep it for that. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and recap this PCB. Okay, so I pretty much have everything set up here. Just bring it over my solder. Um, so the board typically looks like this. It's a really long board. Like I'm just gonna go from the bottom all the way up. And uh, mine has an interface board. It's actually a filter board. You don't really need this. Um, I kept mine on because I wanted to keep it all original. And mine's in really good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. What you gotta do is uh, there's screws that actually go into here. See how there's a hole there? There's one on either side and you have to take them out right here. There's a screw here and a screw here. So when it's attached, you have to remove those two screws first. You pull on these little clips like that. And then normally they're kind of pushed in like this. See, and it locks into place, but uh, you just pull them all out. You could actually pull them all out without taking the screws out. This whole thing will actually slide out all together. But if you want to remove this, you have to take off those two screws I just showed you. So I'm going to take it off, put it to the side, make sure it's nice and safe there. And here it is. So my edge connector is in pretty nice shape. I had already cleaned it, so I'm not gonna mess with that. Um, but basically the caps that you wanna do that are in here, I'm assuming it's just these right over here and then this and that, maybe these, um, and that's it. I think they're, for the majority, they're basically from here and up. There's not really any below. So I got a kit, I believe it's Arcade Parts and Repair carries it. Um, they have really reliable kits in my opinion because they use Nichicons and Nichicons are, you know, the best uh, rated caps. So it has an instruction thing here. It says Millipede Logic Board. So let's go ahead and open it. And there's a couple stuck in between. Yep. <laughs> that slipped in there. And it's cool because he has these instructions and you can actually use these uh, QR codes, and if you need the big blue, which we already did in the past, you can just kind of scan it. It takes you right to the part on his website, or the Atari AR kit, which we already did as well. So we we did these two, so we really don't have to worry about those. Um, but these up here, it looks like most of them are 1UF at 50 volts. I'm guessing that's all these. They're all axial caps. Axial means it looks like an axle. That's why they name it like that, as opposed to radial caps. Radial caps kind of look like this where they have uh, both ends coming out the same the same way, but these are axial. So um, I'm just gonna organize them. This is one at 50 volts. I guess I'll just put them on the side. I'll just keep them over here so you guys can see too. This is also one at 50. And they also have, each one has uh, negative and positive on them. So this one says negative with that stripe and it says negative on it but see how it's pointing to the right? So this is the side that's negative and the other side is positive. So if you're wondering what's what, that's how you have to put them in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just dump them all out here. Just wanna make sure. So there should be, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 of them at 50. So one UF at 50 volts. Let me just look here. This is 10 UF at 50 volts, so I'm gonna put that on the side. This is one UF at 50. Same thing here, one UF at 50. One UF at 50 as well. So I always say, you know, you can just go ahead and do everything, but I like to organize them, make sure I have all the parts. But it's the worst when you start a project and realize you don't have everything you need. Uh, when you have that 50, so it's two, four, six, seven. These are probably the same as well. When you have at 50. When you have at 50. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So I need two more. Let's see, this is 1UF at 50, and this is also, is it? 
Oh, this is 10 UF at 50 volts, goes up there. This one here is 1 UF at 50. And this last one should be different. Let's see. Oh, 1 UF at 50. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we counted 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. And then we have 10 UF at 50, which is three of them. So I might have, it looks like I got one of them wrong. So let me double check here. Huh, I wonder if I got any of these wrong. 1 UF at 50, negative's going down. This is 10 UF at 50, you see? So I got this one wrong. Uh, 47 UF at 50 volts, so let's see what this is here. This is 47 at 50. I'm gonna face down again, negative, just to be consistent here. It's only one of those. And it looks like there's two of the 100 at 35. So these are 100 UF at 35 volts. Facing down as well. 100 UF at 35, okay. All right, so I just organized them all here. You don't have to do that, but I really strongly suggest it because like, like you saw, I got these wrong and you do not want to mix them up. So it says here in the instructions, the actual voltage rating may be higher than stated. So what they're saying is um, this one here may say like uh, one UF at um, 35 volts or 16 volts, but the 50 volts are okay. As long as you have the same UF uh, microfarads, you know, which is the UF symbol. Um, you can have higher than that. You don't want to do the opposite where this says one at 50 and then you replace it with a 16 volts. Definitely don't want to do that. So if these are 16 and these are 50, it's perfectly fine. Theoretically, you could put one at 250 volts. It'll be a little bigger. It should work because the UFs are the same with the microfarads. So, so uh, positive usually has a longer lead. See how this one's longer than the other one? It's hard to see. But this one on top is longer than that one. That's positive. And then this one here is negative. It's also on the same side and it's pointing to it. <laughs> so that makes it easier as well. But typically one is longer than the other. Um, I'm not sure if that's the case on these. I feel like they're exactly the same length. I'm gonna try quickly bending it just to see. Yeah, they seem about the same length here. So the way you tell, like I said, is it has this negative symbol on here and then it's pointing to that side. So this side right here would be negative and then this side would be positive. So that's how you tell on axials. See, it's pretty easy on this board. It says positive on one side and negative on the other. I'm actually gonna zoom in for you guys so you guys can see that. Just to make it a little easier and I'll, I'll move the camera over so you can see. But see how like, actually these are a good example right here. It says positive on this side on the board and negative. You should never really trust what the board says because sometimes they're wrong. They're not in this case, um, I'm just saying in general, uh, when you're doing caps for monitors and all that. Um, the GL7, for example, there's one of the uh, caps that are actually printed correctly on this side, but then the opposite side is printed incorrectly. So they're actually reversed. So you just have to know. Um, I think Peter notates that in his cap kits. But anyway, you really want to just follow what it says. Um, I typically just look at what's in there. So if you look at this one here, that's positive, right? And that's negative. And if you look at the markings, negative right here is pointing to this way. So you know that this side is negative. The opposite side would be positive. Same thing here, it's hard to tell. If you turn this one here, this one actually is pointing this way. So that means that this is negative and that's positive. So um, that looks right. And then this one looks like it's the same thing because they're all the same. So should be pretty straightforward. Um, I like to get the big caps first. So I think I'm gonna knock these two out. Uh, this one looks like it says 100 at 35. I guess it'd be right here. You replace with this and you'll see that a lot is that the newer stuff here i'll go down a little bit so you can see the newer stuff typically since it's better technology is a lot smaller i have a i'm really lucky that i have one of these this is a fr300 the 301 is actually the latest model but this one works just as good right there is where i gotta go so i'm just gonna take it it should be fine it looks like it's a little big for this application but i do have different tips i just don't feel like changing it right now and I'm gonna take it, and typically I like to go underneath and kind of feel and rock it a little bit just to make sure that it's taking it out. So you can see, see the little wiggle I'm doing? I'm going like this. So we're looking like right, right here where I just touched. See how, that's how I know, okay, I have the right cap. And then this one over here. 
All right, so it looks like it's good. See how it's just, I wiggle it in a way where it doesn't try to take the pad off. I only do it when it's loose. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to lift any. So now I'm going to turn it over. This is it right here. I'll actually pull it down a little bit so you can see. And sometimes you'll have components blocking you. You could always use pliers just to take it out as long as you don't pull too hard. And this is it. So this is positive, negative, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna go here and look, it says 100 at 35 volts. And see how this is upside down like that? I like to mount them so that they're like this. So I wanna be able to read it without touching the board. If I ever need to replace it or order parts, it's better to mount them with it facing up so that you can see everything, kind of like that one was. So, so 100 at 35, I'm gonna chuck it in the garbage. So I know I have it here. And you see here it says positive. It's kind of hard. You can't really see because it's getting blocked, but let's see if you can see that here. See how it says positive right there? That's actually for that hole right there. And then negative would be the opposite. I think it's only marked as positive. The negatives aren't marked. Negative is going to be that way. Positive is that way. So I'm going to stick it in here. The other end I want to stick in there. And I'm just going to pull it through on this side. Just like that. Axials are a little different when it comes to working on them. But they're pretty much the same. Just a little different when it comes to like putting them in because you got to bend them and stuff. So that looks okay to me. Pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to turn it over. You can hold it on this side, but I'm not going to. What I like to do is I'll just kind of pull it a little bit. So I'm pulling it up a little bit. And that's it. Should go right in. Take some solder. I'm just going to tin this real quick. And I have, you can see the smoke flowing to the left or your right. Um, I have a fan here kind of sucking the air away and all the smoke away. You got to do that. You can't be breathing this stuff in. It's not really that good for you. Uh, I think I'm going to do this one first. Let's see. So I'm putting heat on the pad and on the leg at the same time. Holding it for a second and letting go. Same thing over here on the leg and on the pad for a second and let it go. Right, that looks good to me. I'm going to double check this one for a tiny bit more. And that's it. I like to check it before I snip it because I can pull it. So right now it's, it's kind of floating on top there. So what I like to do is I'll kind of heat this up, push it from underneath like I just did. Same thing over here. All right, that looks good to me. Now you can go ahead and cut it. These thicker legs right here, I like to save because these make really good um, bridges. Like if you have a pad lifted and need to connect to, these really work well. Um, they're a lot sturdier because they're bigger caps. So I'll just put this on the side and I'll keep it. But these other small ones over here that I have, like these, um, I'm usually going to just chuck when I finish them. All right, so brand new cap. There we go. Looks great already. So that's it right there. That's the old one. And we'll do the same thing. So I'm going to go on this side. Kind of take this one here. Take this one over here. And then what I'll do is I'll have my hand underneath just in case. That one's kind of loose. And this one here. All right, looks like they're both out, so I'm just going to pull them out. And this board is pretty well marked, so I'm just going to pull it right out. So again, there we go. So that's going to be negative is down and positive is on top. And I think it's the same one, right? So 100 at 35. So we're going to throw these two out. And I'm just bending them to be ballpark. It doesn't have to be perfect. And negative is going that way. So I'm going to just stick that in. Sometimes you'll see like a little bit of solder there. I'm going to take it out because... 
I don't want to lift a pad by mistake. It goes there. And again, negative is facing that way. This positive is right there. That's it. Just pull it through. Flip it over. Solder, rinse, and repeat. So I used to actually solder when I was really young. Um, I used to just mess like with radios and, you know, battery operated radios. I had a Snoopy radio that I actually fixed by soldering the battery wire back on. I guess it had fallen off one of the, you know, I had a red and black wire there for nine volts. That looks okay. I'm just going to leave that. And, um, you know, I just practiced since I was a kid and then I stopped for a while and then I tried uh, soldering at Radio Shack stuff which is okay, but you're definitely gonna want something like this. Either this, this is a Hako, or you wanna get a uh, Weller. Uh, they run about $100, and they're totally worth it. I have links in the description. They're all affiliate links, so, you know, I get a small kickback on that. It's like pennies, but, you know, it doesn't cost you anything, and you might as well click on that versus just going on your own. Um, but they work really well. You know, I would have to say that once you switch to this, and you think you know how to solder with the Radio Shack ones, and then when you switch over to this, it's like, whoa, it's amazing. It's all regulated, it's all digital, has a digital readout, and it gives you the steady temperature that you need. In this case, I'm setting mine to 750 Fahrenheit. You could set it to 650. I just like to set it higher to get in and get out. Um, 650 takes a little bit longer, and I don't wanna lift any pads. So, you know, opinions may vary on that, but I like setting it to that, so. All right, so let's get this other big one right here. So I'm looking right there, and that one looks like it's the uh, 135. So, huh, I do not have that one. So now we looked at it, those two were 135. I'm gonna double check them by fishing through the garbage here. It may not have that one. I'm not sure how necessary it is, but let's see. This is 100 at 35, okay, and then this one is 100 at 35. So those are correct, but it only comes at two. I'm assuming these are the two they want switched, the ones that we just looked at right here. But there is a third one over here. Hmm. I have to look. I might actually have this somewhere. But if not, I mean, it knows, I know it's not supposed to come in the kit because according to this, it has 100 at 35, it's at C39 and C43. So let's see, C43 is right there. I'll kind of point it out here. So C43 is right there um, and C39 would be right there. So those are the two that they recommend changing. So there's nothing about this one, that's C46. That's where that's located right here. It says nothing about it, so I'm not really sure if I should switch it or not. Well, we'll leave it just in case. It was working fine. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but it would make me feel better if this was swapped as well, <laughs> just to have them all done. Um, but it doesn't say anything about it on here, so I'm going to leave it. And now we're going to go for these three right here. So let me pull it so you guys can see it. So these three. And it looks like they're all the same value. That would be these three right here. Let me just double check. We'll look at this thing right here. So it says here, um, actually I'll flip it for you guys so you can see. Can you see that? All right. So it says here that um, 100 at 35 we did, and then 47 at 50 volts. We're gonna do that in a second. And then 10 at 50 volts is three locations. So it's 31, C31, C32, C34. So it's these right here. So C31, C32, C34. So those are all there. And then the last one I think was here. This one is C33. And that would be this one right here. 47, C33. So let's do that one first and then we'll do those three afterwards. All right, let me clip them off. And you move on to the next one. That looks good to me. All right, so that was this one right here. So that one's done, these two are done, and now we're gonna go for these three. I'm gonna pretty much bend them all the same. 
this last one here. And okay, now positive is all on top here, or, or your bottom actually. I'm just gonna make sure I put this here like that. See, that one's not going through as good. So I'm gonna add some solder to that. On this side. Now I'm just gonna blast it out like this. Somebody suggested I get a Panavice. I will get one eventually. They said for that soldering iron, um, you want to actually do it sideways so that it, you know, you're not fighting gravity when you're trying to take stuff out. So, let's see, let's try it again. So that's negative and that's positive. So we're putting positive in there. <clears throat> negative is facing the other way. Let me make sure I got that. Okay. And this one here. Negative is facing down. Hope you guys can see this. I'm trying to get zoomed in so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And then this last one goes this way. So positive and negative. All right, so they're all facing down, see? This is probably easier than capping because you don't really have to take much out and take it apart and discharge a monitor. But it's still delicate because you are working on your PCB, so, you know, proceed with caution. I've cap capped uh, Outrun, and Outrun is a pretty expensive board. And I'm sure it's because of me. I apologize for that, guys. <laughs> I guess my videos got popular and they started going up in price. Or it could be a coincidence, but they're like $400 a board now working. And about two or 300 probably two to 250 actually, non-working. Uh, you can get deals here and there. But, um, you know, sometimes people see my videos and they want it and we go on eBay and, you know, I help them fix stuff and people want to fix it too. Just grab this. I usually never do this, but I'm grabbing it with this thing like that. There we go. And then these three. But I still got to fix. I have a, I don't know, about, I guess at least three boards that are non-working for Outrun I have right now. I think they might be turbo boards. I'm not really sure. I lost track of them, but uh, I'm not really happy on that one. looks here, so. Let's just reflow it real quick. One, two. This one. All right, that looks good. No, oh, this one looks a little high to me. See that? So I'm just gonna do the same thing. It's the one on the right. I'm gonna heat it up first without pushing, and then I'm gonna push it through once it's heated, and then hold it there took same thing with this I'm gonna heat it first then push after you don't want to do the opposite it'll take your pad right off all right and I'm just gonna okay all right so there it is looks a little better now we got to do these over here in the corner these right here and I could probably take them all out because they're all one at 50 so I'm gonna replace that one first so those are all one at 50 so you know what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna mess with it sometimes you got to do it you just snip it here I'm gonna snip it right there and I'm gonna lift it up that way I can pull it with my hand so I'm getting underneath here now. Let's see if we can do it. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, so we got it. It's being a little stubborn, but I got that end out. I'm gonna toss it, and then we're gonna take this with the pliers, and that should be good to go. So. Here. 
There we go. It's out. Phew. Close. So again, you know, take your time. <laughs> Crap like this happens all the time. All right, so that's nice. It's good to go. I'm gonna, um, there's a big blob up here on top. I think that's what was preventing it. Let me zoom in to show you guys. So if you look here, uh, see that blob? There's actually a couple of them. See that? There's one right there pretty big and nasty and then that one's really big so I'm just gonna take this and clean it up here we go check it out melt it same thing over here get a little bit more here all right good to go so now we can stick the other one in so all that we have left now is one at 50s so measure a little bit and positive is there so negative is going to go that way so let's go ahead and put that in there where are we here We're right there I'm trying to move it over so you can see it there we go so let's gonna put that in positive negative condense it a little bit. I might have made that a little too tight there. There we go. So that works. So this is the fun part. Taking them out, it's not that fun. I can actually turn off, I'm pretty confident, I turned off my soldering, um, desoldering iron there. I tend to forget to do that, but now that I have it hooked up to the arcade machines, um, if I turn the arcade machines off, it'll turn off too, because I've left it on overnight by mistake. Nothing's happened, thank God, but definitely don't want to do that. So I'm just bending them all. Like, uh, I'll show you what I'm doing. Just doing that, just ahead of time. All right, so let's put them in. So I'm gonna lift them up a little bit. And I want negative to be that way, so. I want them all to face the same direction of that way towards this edge connector here. So go there. Pretty cool. I'm actually psyched that this is getting done. That way when my kick comes, it's kind of hinting at that at the beginning of the video, but basically uh, Joe, he's a really cool guy. I met him a couple years ago, actually a few years ago now, at uh, Zapcon. Um, my buddy Paul is friends with him and uh, he introduced me to him and we did this thing. He was talking about the remix kit that he carried on his website and I was trying to help him out by linking to it. And um, he actually, he had given me a multi versus light, which I still have. I did a video on that and how to program it and stuff. And I plan to put it in my uh, versus cab that I plan to restore in the future. Um, but anyway, he's, uh, you know, we kept in contact through the years. And um, I saw his little preview video he did of the super multi -pede. And basically what it is, is it has super breakout. has variations of breakout on there. I don't know if it's super breakout or breakout. I mean, I'll definitely cover it when I have it on here, but he needed some beta testers. So I volunteered right away. I said, hey man, gotta do it. I gotta put it on the channel. I gotta show people what's going on. Cause the only kit they have out there, which is pretty good is the brace kit. Uh, but this one has centipede, multi, uh, centipede, millipede, few breakout variations, and it has warlords. So I'm assuming it's a one player warlords where you just, you know, use the mouse to go back and forth. The, uh, I'm sorry, the trackball to go back and forth. But it's still very interesting and I'm curious about it. So I told him, I said, I'm all in, let me know. <laughs> so he said, it's ready um, and I just have to um, wait for it. It's gonna come any day now. So I wanna be prepared because I didn't wanna put it in this board without being capped and fully 100% because, um, you know, we don't know like if there's an issue with the thing, I wanna make sure it's not my board that has the issue. So I wanna put this in, cap it, make sure it's good to go, and then uh, 
I won't have to worry when I put in his kit. I'll know this works 110%. So that's my goal of doing this right away. Okay, I think that's it. I'm looking at him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, let me see how it looks on the other side before I cut them. Yeah, it looks nice and neat. I like that a lot. Okay, so I'm zoomed out a little bit. What I'm going to do is I have this 99% uh, alcohol. I'm just going to spray it on the parts that I did, like over here where you see the brown, where the flux is, and I have this awesome um, cotton swab. It's not really cotton. It's, uh, you know, just a foam. But it works really good on cleaning stuff up. And it's completely safe. The stuff doesn't get caught on anything. It's awesome. So I'm just inspecting each as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then there's one, two, I'm gonna spray some more there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's six of them. It's 10 total. Just want to get in here. I see a little bit of darkness here. You can see the dirt and the flux going on it. it works really, really good. And it doesn't get caught. So I kind of love it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay, so we're back. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to set the dip switch settings. I actually double checked them. They were actually set to default on my board already, which is really good. So these are the three. There's this one, this one, and that one. So all I did was change that to free play. Everything else is set to default. Default is also Twin Galaxy settings, so that's why I like setting my stuff to here. That way if anybody comes over, they can try to go for the world record. It's pretty cool. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch this now to put this uh, connector back on. So I'm going to show you how it works, where we put these on like this. Let's see if I can get it to work here. It's actually going this way. So I'm going to kind of pop it in. I'm going to move it like that and plug it in. And I'm just going to hold it down here. So that's in there. And then it fastens with the two screws, which I'm about to grab. I'm not really sure what I did. Oh, they're right here. So the two screws I was talking about earlier, you can actually just uh, put them on like this. Sometimes I, actually, I do this when it's actually in the uh, game, but you can also do it here. So it kind of screws in there. Let me just make sure it's in there. Yep. So there's one. There we go. I think I got it. So, you know, I don't really put it in that tight. It's good to go. That kind of holds it together so that when you pull it out, you're good to go. So you just want to pull these out as well. And what that does, if you look on this side, like if you look at this one right here, it kind of, <clears throat> when you pull it out, it, it lets it get loose and it lets it snap in. And then when you push it in, it pushes it out to lock it in place. So that's what they're doing. So I'm just going to pull them all out, see how they lock in. So they're all out and let's go to the back machine. We'll pop this in there and then we'll turn it on and play a game just to make sure that it's set for free play and that everything works right. All right, so we're at the back of the machine now. I'm actually squeezing in here. And so the connectors, this doesn't go to anything here. This one right here, it's just there. Uh, I'm not really sure what that's for, but it does go in this way. I'm just trying to figure out this goes on top. Yeah, so it goes in this way. And I slide it in right here. I'm trying to figure out which one it goes on. I'm not really sure. I think that's the one that's supposed to go in. There's actually two things that could slide on. Yeah, that's a little too tight. So it actually goes on this one over here. There's two pieces of plastic there. There we go. Yep, that lines up. So I'm going to make sure they're all pulled out. Every single one. And then this is out of the way too. And that's it. So you just make sure it's all on there and then I just close it to make sure it's good to go on the cage. 
So it's pretty cool design. It's fine, and then this will go right here. Nice and solid, nice and sturdy. So I'm not going to close it up just yet because I want to take the Matsushita out um, for the future to do a recap on that. And I also want to do this as well, um, where I want to add the Super multi peed Kit from High Score Saves. Uh, that should be here any day. I'm probably going to do that right away where I'm just going to pull it out. We'll do it together, we'll install it, and we'll go through the options and kind of see what it's, what it's about. I'm going to be beta testing that for a little bit, but you guys can see ahead of time before it gets released, so it should be cool. Um, and that's it for now. So let's turn this thing around. I'll leave the back door off, like I said, and then we'll just um, play the game and make sure the options and everything works. Okay, so I have the game running here, and I could already see, as soon as I turned it on, these are flashing. And it's in demo mode, so that's great. I love the fact that it has demo mode and free play. It doesn't just sit there uh, like Rolling Thunder does or something like that. So it's cool that they did that. Um, these flash and it's good to go. So I'm going to set up the tripod right here the best I can. And we'll play a quick game just to make sure it works. And then we'll kind of close the episode. Here we go. So I'm going to start at zero. And it seems to be working fine. Oh man, <laughs> really tough game. The spiders are just, they get so annoying after a while, but it's still fun. So I got 1200 points right there. So I killed them at the last second. So I want to just clear the bottom. See, I just got 1200 for killing him right there. Cause he was so close to me. So each one that you get, it's 100 points. Oh, and the guy killed me. So that's actually a bonus round. Oh, I wanted to get that guy. Man, they know what I'm doing here. So I'm going to test a two-player game in a second. Let's see. There we go. That guy has a slow motion. Nice. Guy's tricky. That, I love that sound. <laughs> Okay, but they're all down here now because they hit the poison mushroom. Oh, and I just got killed. Oh, spider. Kind of like predicts your move. Okay, so now I'm going to do a two player just to make sure it's working. I'm going to skip ahead to 30,000 now. There's two spiders that come out right at the, off the bat, so it's a little harder. Yeah, there we go. So that's the bonus round. I want to get as many as I can. Doing okay this round. Ooh, that was close. Oh man. Got a little too uh, cocky there. So now I'm going to go to 30,000 again for player two. Whoa. 
So I shot at them at the last minute. I did not want to do that. Okay, player one now. Just kind of shooting them as I can here. I always get that guy just for points, if I can. Uh, so I'm going to clear them as soon as I can when I get back to that. So right now I just want to get these guys out of the way. dangerous right there. Ugh. All right, now I got to clear this on the right for the other guy. Really rolls well. I'm starting to get broken in here, which is really cool. Ugh. So I can actually whip across the screen, which is great. Tough game, for sure. See? Infuriating. <laughs> so game over, player one. Now I'm going to try the other one now. But it's behaving normally, so that's good. That means what I did did not harm it in any way. And it's going to make it last, you know, for years to come, so... Perfect. Get rid of these things. Whoa. Oof. They hit the poison mushroom and go all the way down. So let's put my name in here. Now there has to be a way to keep all these high scores. I'm going to write them down like I said. Uh, because when I do the high score saves uh, mod, it's very possible that these will get wiped out. So. It only keeps the top three, but I don't want to get rid of that 488,721. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, it's good. I recorded them here. So, that way I'll kind of pay homage to Adam's dad, who owned this game previous to me. So, great. So, all right, guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to stop the video now. And when I do get that kid in, the first thing I'm going to do is, is pop it in there and tape it and show you guys how to put it in and we'll see the multi kit where we can actually play centipede on this which i'm really excited to do but in addition we'll have warlords and then the breakout um variation game so cool all right guys um don't forget to hit me up on instagram i post stuff on there all the time again you'll probably see this if you're already following me you'll probably already seen some little sneak peek on what's going on and then also um on Twitter, it's at Dell's Arcade. And if you guys want to email me, you can just hit me up at Dell's Arcade at gmail.com if you want to see any improvements or if you want to even join the Facebook. I have a Facebook group for Delusionals Arcade where you can suggest stuff. You could ask to join and I'll just put you in there. But uh, yeah, 2020 is a new year. It's a lot of fun stuff. I'm not doing as many videos as I did last year, which my New Year's resolution last year was every single week. I hit it, I did it, it was great. Um, but this year, I'm just going to take it easy a little bit and, um, you know, do more quality over quantity. So uh, we'll try to figure out what we can do here. And I'm going to see if I can do some more live stuff, which I know you guys really like. Um, and that's it for now. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.